To our primetime news follow-up now, the homeless woman and her seven-year-old son, highlighted in a primetime news exclusive last Friday, were taken off the streets. Anthony Lugg has the details. Jodi Ann clings on to her seven-year-old son as they lie in a bed, something they've been hoping to do since October 31 last year. Before now, they slept under a bus stop on the cold, haunting streets of Kingston. It feels wonderful. It's a lot more comforting. Um, you don't have to be waking up as often as you would normally wake up. Since TBJ News shared the story of the homeless mother living on the street, she's been receiving an outpouring of support from Jamaicans all over. Hours after, they were sent an angel who assisted them in finding a temporary place. My left foot started feeling cramps at night. So. Since being inside, I can certainly attest to the fact that I haven't felt any cramps whatsoever. The accommodation may be temporary, but it's hoped that with all the support, enough will be garnered to provide the mother and her son with a permanent solution. Until then, Jody has her eyes set on seeking employment. Also in her vision is for her son to be enrolled in school. Gender Minister Olivia Grange visited the family on Sunday and committed to assist in having the child enrolled in school, a news that warms Jody's heart. It alleviated majority of my fears. Which is what? The fear that I would not be able to put my son in school, the fear that he will be out of school for many months, and the fear that I would have to do it all on my own. We often take for granted simple things like sleeping in a bed, having food to eat, and even taking a shower. Now, with the support from Jamaicans over the last few days, Jody has been able to do all these things, and she says she's enjoying every moment. Taking a shower inside, now I can't sing a make nice. <laughs> it's a lot more private, of course. You don't have anybody passing by and looking at you, even though you don't normally be naked. Because Jody's road to recovery has been a hard one to travel, and by all indications, there's a mighty long way to go. But with all the support she has been receiving, she believes it will soon be done. There aren't enough words in the English dictionary nor the thesaurus to explain how overwhelmed I am and really thankful to Jamaica and Jamaicans and the larger diaspora. I am certainly grateful and thankful. I thank God as well. Every day I don't stop praying. I pray every day even though no one may hear me praying, but I pray every day to God for everything. And I'm thankful for all the small mercies. Anthony Log, TVJ News. Meanwhile, Gender Minister Olivia Babsy Grange says the Bureau of Gender Affairs under her ministry has been tasked with finding a solution for some challenges being faced by the family. She provided details. I have made arrangements through the Bureau of Gender Affairs to coordinate the efforts to assist this young lady along with her son and uh, that all the necessary government entities will be approached, will be contacted to see what can be done for her. And a number of persons who have voluntarily reached out to her to assist, we want to ask them to make contact with the Bureau of Gender Affairs so that the assistance we provide to her can be handled in a coordinated way. Contact can be made with um, the acting director of Community Liaison, Dr. Tamika Parrott, and the telephone number is 867-301-7128.